Good morning. I am Pastor Tom Curry. Welcome to the worship of Victory English Fellowship in Shinshu City, Taiwan. We realize that most of you are sitting in your homes or sitting around the kitchen table uh, here in Taiwan or maybe some other part of the world. But regardless of where you are today, we pray that this service would be special, that you would sense the truth of God's word throughout our service and the Holy Spirit moving and working in our lives. So I do welcome you in that sense. We gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for today. Even though we're not able to be together in this room, to get, uh, in this room Lord, with, with voices raised and hearts in one, Lord, we can be together in spirit worshiping you today. And we thank you for that miracle, Father God. Come and be with us, Lord. Put your Holy Spirit upon Pastor John as he brings the message today in Jesus' name. Amen. As the psalmist says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you All of my days I want to praise The wonders of your mighty love My comfort, my shelter Tower of refuge and strength
checkered past. Many of us have done things that we wish if we had a chance we'd never do that again, Lord. Many of us have learned the hard way in, in life and we bear the scars for it. And in many ways, Lord, none of us are really that good by which you would be honored by our, our presence. But Lord, by our faith, we're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And with boldness, we do enter your throne room. And we approach you, Heavenly Father, as the God of all the universe, as the God of Abraham, uh, Isaac, and Jacob, as the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we come to you today, and we're mindful of all these COVID cases, all these COVID deaths, around the world and especially the battle, the war that is going on here in this country with this disease. Lord, we continue to pray to give our government leaders wisdom in knowing the decisions that need to be made as, as far as getting these numbers down and getting vaccines and getting life to normal. We appeal to you, Heavenly Father, in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, we ask you in the name of Jesus, come to our aid, have mercy upon us. We know we've sinned. We don't deny that. We don't try to hide that. We confess our sin before you today and thank you for your mercy and for your grace. Lord, we want our homes to be strong we want our marriages to be strong and we realize that's not always the case. And we pray for every one of our marriages, Lord, that uh, each one of uh, the husbands would be humble, godly men, wives would be humble, godly women, uh, that neither, neither men or women would be selfish, Lord, but we would be kind to one another and truly focused upon you, that our marriages can reflect you, can glorify you. Lord, we pray for all of those people who uh, have gone through divorce, uh, have experienced the pain of rejection, of abandonment. We pray your continued healing in their lives, Lord. We remember them. Thank you that, Lord, as single people or as married people, we can serve you and glorify you. Lord, we pray for those who are battling sicknesses today. We ask for your healing touch, your healing presence in the congregation of VEF today. This morning, we ask in Jesus' name, comfort those who grieve, Lord. And Lord, today, we're also here not only to celebrate you, Jesus, not only to worship you, Heavenly Father, but to say thank you to Peter Park, a precious brother in Christ that has been a blessing to VEF for the past two years. And Lord, we give you thanks for him and his wife and his family, and we pray your continued blessing and guidance upon his life. All these things today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There will be a momentizing webinar guaranteeing for third culture is on Saturday, June 26th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. 
A TCK is someone who has spent a good chunk of their developmental years outside of their parents' culture. If you would like to know more about the challenges and benefits of raising TCKs, please join this webinar. Today, I will share with you one of the most handsome men on earth. You might agree with me or you might not. But we know in God's eyes, he is the most handsome and most precious. Today, we will congratulate Peter Park on his graduation from the theology school. This doesn't mark the end, but the beginning of ministry in God's kingdom with God's perfect plan. Victory English Fellowship was so privileged to have him as our interim minister for the past few years. Dear brother Peter, where should I begin? <laughs> Is it his signature red jacket shirt that he wears every Sunday? Or the way he laughs at his own jokes when the congregation is too afraid to laugh out loud? Or is it his passionate, fire-burning sermons that we just want to raise our hands and, and shout amen? Or is it his beautiful, beautiful musical gift that lifted the worship time and we all became one in Christ? I learned so much from you, Peter, to serve as God's beloved daughter instead of a slave to just do good deeds. I learned that serving on the worship team was not to please God, but to have His honor, to have this honest vertical relationship with Him. Peter, you are never afraid to be truthful to the faith through your numerous ministries with VFY sermons, worship team workshops mission corners, vacation Bible studies, just many and many more. You were always, always present with the Holy Spirit. In your last sermon, Abide in Love, you preached from John 15, 9 to 7, 17. John 15, 16 said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you that you will love one another. Brother Peter, serving in God's kingdom is eternal. We will all abide in love, in God's love. Congratulations to you and amen. Hi. Uh... Two years have passed since uh, Peter joined Bia, and uh, we were very sorry to hear the news that Peter uh, moved to another place and bring uh, and uh, this uh, bring me uh, many many memories with him in uh, Bia. As a preacher and as a Bible reader and. Uh, as a Bible study reader and as a worship reader, uh, even a helper in church setting and uh, cleaning, I think he covered a uh, very big scope of whole uh, via ministry. As a preacher, uh, he delivered many God's word uh, in a uh, scholastic and uh, Researchful ways. For me, uh, this way of uh, reaching was very fresh and uh, interesting, and uh, it makes me keep always awake uh, during his sermon. Especially, I appreciate his guidance in voice reading. Uh, he picked me up uh, as a mere broker and uh, now, uh, I'm in charge of the one of uh, the app, uh, was reading group. Uh, I remember uh, he always uh, showed the passion and the sincerity before God. And uh, this, I think uh, this moves and uh, touched many brothers and sisters when he uh, read the worship. I know uh, all this effort and devotions comes from the heart of 
praising and worshiping our God. Even though he stopped ministry in Bria and、uh, moved to another place,、uh, I'd like to pray for God's blessing and guiding him and his family all around his、uh, valuable ministries.、Uh, goodbye, Peter, and、uh, we will、uh, miss you. Keep in touch. Peter,、um, Peter Park,、uh, not a Spiderman.、Um, I happen to be here for the last couple of years as a、um, uh, internship worker,、um, but somehow、uh, I think I need to say sorry for that. I cannot see you guys face to face, say goodbye, only through the、uh, internet now, because as we know, the、uh, situation of COVID-19 is quite strict. However, I was working in Bia for last two years. Last two years, it was really, really wonderful time for me. Great time for me. I was really glad to be in Bia. Sometimes I was leading worship and I was singing in the worship team. And sometimes I was preaching. And sometimes I was leading Bible study. And sometimes I was talking with you guys and. Having fun with you guys and、uh, having meal with you guys, even、um, climbing a mountain, hiking <laughs> with you guys, <laughs> even though it was just one time.、Uh, by the way, all of my memory, all of my experience in BF was beautiful. It was a wonderful time for me. So I really, really want to appreciate of all of you, each one of you. You guys were really wonderful to me. Really, really good to me. I really want to say thank you so much. Yes,、um, today is my last day in VEF、uh, because my study in China Evangelical Seminary、uh, will be finished the 26th of June this month. And then, according to the、uh, my original plan and vision, now I'm looking for the、uh, the another church. Uh, which is the Chinese church, local church, because I、um, that's the、uh, one of the reason why I came to Taiwan to study、uh, MDV course for three years. Please pray for me, pray for my next step. However,、um, I frankly I want to say thank you、uh, because when I look back my two years, yes I. Yes, I'm not really great church worker. Yes,、um, because I know that I have many limitations and weaknesses.、Um, maybe sometimes I wasn't really mature. Sometimes my language is one of the barrier. Sometimes my understanding was.、Uh, Different from、uh, you guys because of the cultural differences.、Uh, all the differences.、Uh, it was. An e- it wasn't easy for me to、uh, always accept, always overcome. But I'm sure that I do believe that. I'm sure that.、Uh, yeah. I'm sure that.、Uh, it was a really good time for me to learn、uh, how to grow up in in such. Uh, wonderful uh, 
international community. Yes, I really, really thank God uh, because God has given me such a wonderful time, wonderful last two years. Oh, personally, I want to say thank you so much for uh, Minister Tim, uh, Pastor John, and Christy, and uh, Darren, and James, and Pastor Tom, and Rhonda. I really appreciate of you guys, um, <laughs> especially John and Christy. Um, we've been together for two years. It was a wonderful time. I learned from a lot, a lot, a lot of things from you guys, uh, especially humility. You guys are such wonderful pastors. I I never forget about you. And then, yeah, thank you so much. I uh, definitely the James and Tom and Londa. I the reason why I can say goodbye today because I trust uh, Tom and Rhonda and James. Uh, these guys are wonderful ministry team, and then I'm 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 still feel that I still feel that the Tom is the one who God has prepared for uh, VEF. Tom, uh, thank you so much. And Rhonda, thank you so much for coming to uh, VEF. And also thank you for the older leadership team, Jeff and Sam and young Timothy and a little bit old Timothy and Big Quay, Linus uh, in US and the Yuppie and all the leadership team. You guys are a wonderful team. You guys are the, um, the really, really important uh, team and a really humble uh, team. I really appreciate of you. I I also especially uh, thank you for uh, Dora. Thank you, Dora, and all the worship team member, Adam, and Fiona, Timotheus, Grace, Yiching, Jonathan, Moni, Rindy, Amelia. Oh no, Amelia. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and also the other team member, Sam. Sam. Oh yeah, Sam. And uh, yeah. You guys are wonderful. You guys are all wonderful guys, wonderful worship team, team member. I hope to see you guys uh, making our VF uh, much, much uh, wonderful uh, house of worship, uh, community for worship. Uh, this is the what you guys uh, keep maintain, uh, working, working, working out. Uh, I, I, I really want to definitely I really want to pray for you guys thank you so much and also I want to say thank you Amelia and Edith and and some other friends thank you so much your friend friendship very very much uh, I don't want to I don't want to say goodbye frankly but I have to say goodbye thank you so much guys um, I will bless all of you I'll bless VF. Uh, VF is very, very wonderful, um, very unique, very beautiful inter international group. And uh, I'm sure that God will use VF to uh, shine His light and upon the whole Taiwan. This is my prayer. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, see you later. Bye-bye. Today, the first reading is from 1 Peter 3, 10 to 17. For whoever desires to love life and to see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him speak peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, no be troubled. But in your heart honor Christ the Lord as holy. 
always been prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason, for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Having a good conscience, so that when you are slander, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. The second reading is from John 1, 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and uh, Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the Lord and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and say of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I say to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, well, welcome to our worship service. I'm John Olson, one of the pastors on staff here at VEF. You know, and today... You know, we, we think of Peter. Uh, you know, this is supposed to be one of Peter's last Sundays here at VEF. He'll be graduating from Chinese Evangelical Seminary on Saturday. Uh, so we do want to say congratulations, Peter. I know you put a lot of hard work and effort, you know, into your years of study. You know, unfortunately, we are still not able to meet in person, but we do hope that you can join us on Sunday night. You know, if you're watching this on Sunday... Uh, you know, join us tonight as we have a virtual send-off for Peter. You know, you can look at the bulletin for the link for that. You know, I first met Peter about two years ago. One of his classmates, David Kwan, you know, a member of, of Victory Church, you know, introduced me to Peter. You know, Peter was looking for an internship. And so I went up to Taipei in June of 2019 and I met Peter, and I talked with him at that time. You know, a lot has happened in these past two years, and in many ways it seems that I've known Peter for a much longer period of time. You know, during his time here at VEF, Peter has had many different roles, from leading Bible studies, to preaching, to helping with the youth group, to, to music. And whatever he's been doing, whether it's been the Bible studies or leading music, you can tell that Peter has a heart to share the gospel. You know, even in the midst of his tiredness from having to study in Chinese, you know, Peter had a heart to share the gospel. He had an attitude where his relationship with God is clearly important to him. And for that, Peter, you know, I'd like to say thank you. You know, my family and I, we will also miss you. You always took time to say hello to the kids. You paid attention to Stephen. And so my family and I would like to say thank you as well. And I will just say on the behalf of VEF, of Victory Church, thank you for your service 
here at, at VEF. And whenever I see a plaid shirt, specifically that red plaid shirt, I will always remember you. Now, some of you are familiar with Peter and his reasons for coming to Taiwan, but perhaps many of you are not. One of the questions I first had for Peter when I met him was, why did you come to Taiwan to study at seminary? You know, Chinese is not your first language. You know, this is difficult. You know, wouldn't it be better for you to go to a seminary in Korea and to be able to study in your own language? You know, if it were me, I would prefer to do it in my own language. You know, but Peter had been working for a number of years in a place to the northwest of here with a Muslim people group, the Hui people. And he said that he wanted to be better equipped to serve the people. You know, he said that he wanted to have theological education and training and experience with the Chinese church so that he would be better equipped to be able to serve the people, to be better, more effective in his ministry. So why not have a native speaker, have a Mandarin speaker go to the Hui people? You know, why did a Korean need to leave his home, the comfort of his own culture and language, and go to a, a place that was not home to a people that were not his own? Now, I don't know Peter's reasons for going, but I imagine that it has something to do with the fact that there are almost no Christians among the Hui people. 0.01% of the Hui people are Christians. That's one out of 10,000, an extremely small number. So the chances that a Hui person would know somebody, a Christian from their own group, is minuscule. You know, it is necessary for someone from the outside to come in and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, this is why Jesus gives the great commission to his disciples before ascending into heaven. You know, in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, Jesus says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. You know, two weeks ago, if you joined the worship service where we had the opportunity to be introduced to some of the missionaries that Victory supports, you would have heard me read from Romans 10. And I'd like to take a, a closer look at that today. So let's also look at Romans 10, verses 8 to 17. So Romans 10, verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Heavenly Father, we come to you today thankful that we can worship you 
you know, gathered from all over the world. But Lord, we have you as our God, Jesus as Savior, the same Holy Spirit. And as we take a look at your words, as we take a look at, you know, your mission of sharing the gospel, sharing the good news, you know, just give us understanding. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, from time to time, I'll hear this quote. Perhaps you have heard it as well. You know, preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. You might see on the screen I have Francis of Assisi and have it crossed out. Uh, that's because this phrase, this quote is attributed to Francis of Assisi. You know, but he never said it, at least not quite in these words. You know, as near as we can figure, it probably comes from his rules of 1221, you know, where he says, No brother should preach contrary to the form and regulations of the Holy Church, nor unless he has been permitted by his minister, all the friars should preach by their deeds. Now I understand the sentiment in that phrase, preach the gospel at all times, use words if necessary. In English we have the phrase actions speak louder than words. You know, often in the church people are accused of being hypocrites. You know, people will say one thing and they'll do another. You know, so there's this idea that we don't actually need to preach. We don't need to tell people the gospel. All we have to do is live it out in our lives. As I said, I, I do understand the sentiment of that. But picture this scenario with me. You know, a husband comes home one day and his wife is angry at him. She doesn't talk to him. She's giving him the cold shoulder. She's not saying anything to him. And he's trying to go to her. What have I done? And he starts to get angry at her. And they start fighting back and forth. Now finally, the husband goes out. He meets with some friends. And he tells them what has happened. And one of his unmarried friends goes to him and says, Look, here's what you need to do. You need to go to your wife and you need to say, you know, look, honey, I've searched the depths of my souls and I don't know what I have done wrong. I don't know what I have done to make you upset. Will you please tell me what I've done wrong? So the husband, he goes home. He walks in the door. His wife is sitting on a chair. She ignores him, doesn't say anything to him. And the husband goes up and he does exactly what his friend says. You know, look, I know that you're mad at me, but I don't know what I've done wrong. Will you please tell me? And she responds to him angrily and says, if you don't know what you've done wrong, then I'm not going to tell you. You should know what you've done wrong. We laugh at this. I laugh at it. Because in many ways, this has probably happened to some of you. I know oftentimes I go to Kirsty and I expect her to be a mind reader. You know, I expect that she automatically will know what I have experienced, what I have done through the day, what I want to say. And then when she doesn't understand, I get upset. And that's not fair. I actually need to communicate with her and use all of the words that I want to say to her. You know, whenever I do marriage counseling with people, or pre-marriage counseling with people, you know, I try to tell the, the future husband and wife, the bride and groom, communication is important. Never assume that your spouse knows what you are thinking. In fact, assume that they don't know what you're thinking. Yes, maybe it's obvious, but never assume. You need to communicate very clearly. You need to use these words. And so we see that, you know, words 
are important. And the actions as well are important. You now, with the actions, I'm reminded of Matthew 5, 14 to 16. Jesus is giving the Sermon on the Mount. And he says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Good works are useful. A relationship with God that is clearly visible is good. It's not that we do these good works so that God will love us. God doesn't need our good works. But if you look closely at this passage, you see these good works are for our neighbors. They are supposed to be able to look at us and to see what we're doing, how we're acting, how we're reacting to situations. And through that, they will give glory to God the Father. So our good works, our actions, our deeds, they are to be signs pointing to Christ, pointing to God. And Jesus exemplified this. He loved people. He ate with them. He spent time with them. He healed them. Everything he did was to bring glory to God the Father. All of the miracles that he performed in John, John often calls these miracles signs because they are pointing to the fact that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah, the Holy One, the one who will save people from their sins. You know, our actions, our words, our works should be pointing to God. But did Jesus only eat with people, spend time with them, heal them? No. He also taught them. You know, you look throughout the Gospels and you see that Jesus was constantly teaching the people. He would go into the synagogues and he would teach. He would go to the mountainsides and the crowds would be around him and Jesus would teach. Often he taught in the form of parables, these stories with a point, with a purpose. You know, Jesus used words. He taught people. He preached to them. You know, we can't just expect people to look at our lives and automatically know that there is a God who has created us, who loves us, who wants to be in a relationship with us. You know, we need to use words for all of those things. You know, just like we can know that there is God, a God from creation. You know, his law is written on our heart. We have general revelation that points to this divine power and creator. But we need the Bible to give us this specific revelation about Jesus Christ, about God the Father and the Holy Spirit. We need this. And people need words to understand how great God is, that he has created us, that he loves us, and wants to be in a relationship with us. We need to have words ready. You know, when we live a life that is honoring God, that is pointing to him, then people will have questions about that. You know, 1 Peter 3.15 says, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. In your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. When we live a life that is honoring God, that puts Christ at the head, then we're going to be different. People are going to notice that. And whenever people are different, there are some who will come up to you and will ask, you know, I've noticed there's something different about you. Why do you do this? 
And we should be prepared. We should be ready to give an answer for why we're different. Ready to give an answer for the reason that we have hope, even in the midst of troubles. Now, there are some Christians, some people I've met, they're afraid of sharing the gospel. They're afraid of talking with others about their faith. You know, they think, I am not a gifted apologist. I am not able to give a good, solid defense and reasons for Christianity. What if somebody comes up to me and says, prove that the flood happened. Prove to me that evolution is wrong and that creation is right. You know, prove to me that Jesus is a real historical figure and that he rose from the dead again. And they said, I'm not prepared to be able to give a defense of these things. But guess what? You don't have to be. You know, the truth is, I don't always have the answers either. People will come up to me and sometimes and ask me a question, and sometimes I'll have to say, that's a good question. I don't know. Or I might say, that's a good question. Why don't we try to find the answer together? And then I might go to a resource, a book, or ask another person for help in that area. But quite honestly, most people, they are not looking for you to give them 10 reasons, 10 proofs that the Bible is reliable and historically accurate, that Jesus was a historical person. I think you'll find that when you have a relationship with people, they're willing to listen to you. You know, it's much more important in today's world to have a relationship with somebody and to say, you know, let me tell you about Jesus and how he changed my life and how I've been transformed. You know, this personal experience is so important. You know, this past week, in the Lion Group, in the Facebook group, I recommended a podcast to listen to. You know, how to have spiritual conversations. And in that podcast, you know, Pastor Eric Sorensen, he gives some examples of how he has spiritual conversations with people. And about halfway through the podcast, he mentioned a staggering statistic that he had heard for America. You know, he said he had heard that 96% of non-church people said that they would be willing to consider going to church if somebody invited them. Think of that. 96% of non-church people said that they would be willing to consider it. But only 21% of all active church members ever invited someone to church once a year. And then only 2% of active churchgoers ever invited a non-Christian to attend church. You know, think of that. One out of 50 church members ever invited an unchurched person, a non-Christian, to go to church. You know, we expect people to come through our doors. Our doors are open. Well, right now they're not, but we hope that they will be soon. Why don't people come? We need to invite others. And even now, in the midst of us having to have virtual church or digital church, you know, I would encourage you, share the link for the worship services with other people. Invite people to the worship service so that one day when we're able to open again, that you're able to invite them again. You know, invitation is a powerful thing. Be bold. Take time to invite people to church. You know, this is exactly what happened in the story we read for our scripture reading today. You know, in John chapter 1, 
verses you know, 43 to 51, remember that. That Jesus is calling his disciples. And Jesus meets Philip. He invites Philip. He says, come and follow me. You know, Philip immediately goes to his friend Nathaniel. And he says, you know, I've met the Messiah, the promised one. You know, this pr- person that all the prophets have been writing about. The person that we have been waiting for. He's here. Come and meet him. Oh, by the way, he's from Nazareth. And Nathaniel, he has some doubts. Nazareth? That dumpy town? Nothing good ever comes out of Nazareth. And Philip doesn't try to give all these reasons why Jesus is from Nazareth, why he could possibly be the Messiah. You know, he merely says to Nathaniel, come and see. Come with me. And I get this idea, this excitement that Philip says, come and see. And Nathaniel, he goes. He meets Christ and his life is changed. Don't be afraid to meet Invite people. You know, we need to use words when sharing the gospel. Going out into the world, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. We can see from the Bible that the word of God is powerful. You know, it's described as being as living and active. Powerful more penetrating than any two-edged sword. You know, we see that the word of God goes out and it doesn't return empty-handed. You know, I've heard stories of people who have become a, you know, before they became a Christian, they were encouraged to read the Bible. And they were reading it. And they put it down. They picked up the Bible, they turned it over. And they, you know, what is this book? There's something powerful in it, and they didn't understand it. You know, we see that through words, God created the world. He spoke, and the world came into being. Words are powerful. You know, we are to go out and to share this good news of Jesus Christ. You know, Romans 10, 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And then Romans 10, 17, so faith comes from hearing and hearing comes through the word of Christ. You know, we have this wonderful promise. Anyone and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is a promise that we have from God. It is a wonderful blessing that we have a wonderful assurance. This is the reason that we can have hope. You know, this is the message of the gospel. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And this is the message that we have the privilege of sharing. So let's go to God right now. And just give thanks. You know, Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We give you thanks and praise that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus came down to this world, lived a life of perfection, of sinlessness, and he died in our place. And Lord, we know that there are countless people around the world, in the far-flung reaches of the world, in our own backyard, that don't know about Jesus, that don't know that there is this God who has created them, who loves them, who wants to have a relationship with them. And so, Lord, I pray that you would raise up missionaries among us. 
You know, people who would be willing to go out to other peoples and to spread this good news. But I also ask for those of us that are here, you know, we are also called to share in Jerusalem, in Judea. We are supposed to be sharing this good news in our own backyard, in our own city, in the neighborhoods around us. So Lord, just give us boldness and courage to be able to give a reason for the hope that we have. May this shine loud and clear. May we be this light on a hill that people would see us, see the good works, and that they would praise you. Lord, we want to see your kingdom grow, your kingdom enlarged. So I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
kind and gentle death Waiting to hush our latest breath Oh, praise Him, hallelujah Thou leadest home the child of God And Christ our Lord the way hath trod Oh, praise Him The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.